Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it. With the new Galaxy S24 Ultra and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Welcome to the Bare Naked Abyss. It is a somber occasion. We are here this week to uh, honor and and justify and just recognize the amazing life of Steve Um, Wish I could tell the way that I feel, but tonight (laughs) is the night I fell asleep. Unfortunately, died last night. he fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> no commotion. And um, no so screaming it, it, with our pallbearers no today are Aaron and myself. Um, Betsy will be giving a amazing eulogy as we go along. Trips. And uh, we do have a guest <laughs> him, uh, hymnal. Hymnus, I guess you would say. Hymnus. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm an Olympic hymnist. <laughs> Not the um, this <laughs> is a somber occasion. No laughing Can't at you. It's a celebration of life. <laughs> Are you the type of... I'm, Tracy, I'm the type of... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. um, our, our hymns today will be led by the amazing Bubba Week. From the lyrical innuendo podcast. By. Welcome, hey, slow buddy. motion walk. Hey, hey, it's good to be here. And uh, yes, um, for our opening hymn, open we will be playing Tonight is the Night I Fall Asleep. And that's even appropriate given the manner in which she supposedly passed away. It, it was the jaws of life, the oh, okay. Well, I can see that. I can see that as well. Nobody some, for some reason, he must have known ahead of time that how that was I feel Modern day Nostradamus. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to discuss this uh, song that I think it's the longest name of a song for CNL. Um, obviously, not a world record holder, but it's, it's pretty far up there. And you how long this song is. You're the last thing on and in terms of a track, actually. You're the last thing on I mean, it's not. It's, it's, it's over five minutes. You're the last. Audience, my dear audience, if you still know indeed what a compact disc was, <laughs> if you place this in your compact disc player, you see the track. Well, yeah, uh, I, I fully admit that there is a. a an expanse of silence followed by a secret song followed by a further expanse of silence but we couldn't <laughs> talk about the length of the name without me saying oh okay. one of my first thoughts when i opened up the song to listen to was wow this is a long one uh, this is longer than albuquerque in a gata That's de what vida what's going on yeah. Suddenly, <laughs> sorry i had to throw that one sound. no no you know i set it up for yeah, you yeah so. Knock that one right out of the park. <laughs> um, so, Aaron, I mean, yes. you talked about the track length, but um, this, is, was hoping you wouldn't ask. this is the last song on this disc. Yeah, I figured that out, given that there's a secret song. But what's, what's the disc? I mean, this is one of the tougher ones. I mean, it's 
obviously a Stephen Page song. Uh, I think the obvious pun that I made not. last. Oh, was it in a Page Duffy? Nope. Page Robertson. So okay. Okay. No, that's fair. Good luck, John. But you know what I mean. Grand. I mean, he's taking a lead vocal. It's very much to very our plug humor in it. It seems very much butterfly. of Stephen Page. It's sunk in I this generation. The generation. This song should be from Maybe You Should Drive. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> the, the old timey folk song Inside feels good. Could make for a good audio pun for Born on a Pirate. Sun oh. that burns I'm burns. trying to gauge your reactions here. <laughs> uh, poker face. Never but cut the last. Yeah, you're like Lady Gaga over here. Uh, the last factor is the album that I have thus far heard the most diversity of style in. And I think that's Maroon. This song kind of feels like it belongs in the same album as Inventioneers. You know, it's quirky, it's very different. Not kind of their usual genres or styles. So I'm going to go with Maroon. You are correct, sir. Shiver. <laughs> Oh, that had me sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I was really uh, trying to pull you away from the room. Uh, yeah, I, could, I thought you were... You were me thinks that would be and she held me and I did. Uh, and she showed me the 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 uh, Before we talk more about this song, I do want to go over to Bubble Me, and I want to ask mm-hmm. you a little bit about your history Inside with, with B&L. Like, what, you know, where did uh, your life intersect with it? I, I think I've heard it's, it's pretty much where a lot of people did in one week. Um, that's you know, where I heard them. And I, I, you know, I love that song whenever I heard it. But it never does any harm to anyone. I Bare Naked Ladies uh, album. Uh, but I, I have heard, you know, I have a fair number of them. And it um, no, the million dollars. Um, and then. I can't think of them, but you know, basically they're singles off their like next couple albums. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's fair. Most people that weren't in the BNL scene before before one week, that's what pulled them in. And they got them. And and I do like their like their sense of humor and love their lyrics. And, Especially like some of their kind of uh, almost like dad joke humor. Like my favorite line in a bare naked lady song is, you know, "I could hide out under the <laughs> just make you say underwear." The first time I heard that, I did actually say it out loud, and I lost my mind. <laughs> He's reading my mind. Who's that? Oh. Brilliant. I mean, that, that's 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 Ed. Like Ed's dad. Whereas Stephen Page is known for taking this uh, calm, comical, circusy sort of three-four waltz ballad about a horrific car crash in which the narrator presumably dies. <laughs> uh, we should yeah. probably talk about where this song kind of came from. Um, so <clears throat> it originated by. I'm trying to go down through my notes because I have this stuff at the bottom. Um, it originated that somewhere, it, it, it's hard to know exactly where, but Ed talked about in the book um, on the private, the public stunts private stories. He talked about the fact that this, he, he was thinking about like what happened in the moments before his brother died in the car trash. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not what Steven talks about when he talks about Mm. where this story came from. So my guess is, like, somewhere in the middle is the truth. Like, they each probably had a starting spot that they each kind of came from with this. And it built in in, in a very Beatles-esque fashion. Like, they just kind of blended. This is probably... Honestly, I think probably one of the more blended uh, songs. Are you saying that Steven this is Ed. the end of life slash happiness is a warm gun of the BNL library? I, I would definitely say so, but I would say it's even more blended than a day in the life because like that's just like here's half John's song and then Yeah. Happiness is a warm gun is a better and- example because it comes back and forth and yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, the what Steven talks about is the twist lyric that we'll get to later mm. on. Um, and that was a big thing for for him. Um, and and for him, well, I mean, I guess we can get into what this song is about, and that's why I was avoiding it. Um, but that's that was what Stephen Page focused on was this the the intent of this song um, as he was writing it. So, um, but Ed's Ed's statement of "I'm gonna be all right" looks around him. Oops, nope, I'm dying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> and he talked about how your body must just flood with endorphins to make the pain go away mm-hmm. and for a second you're lucid mm-hmm. so I, I mean i i love the way that ed puts that um yeah it's it's a really great song i think but let's let's see what you guys think what do you think the song is about let's break down the lyrics of this song okay Bubba, we, would you like to start with us? Sure. Um, one one thing that I really loved about this song, like th- this is a song that I'd never heard before you you sent it to me. And I, I listened to it a few times. And, and the more I thought about it and, and uh, listened to the lyrics and, and looked up some, you know, a, a little bit online, I didn't do a ton of research, but I looked up, a, you know, a couple thoughts online. The, the thing that really stood out to me is, how everything has kind of a double meaning to it mm. and and you can really read multiple things to to what the lyrics say because you know it it starts out that he's talking about you know coming home to uh to you and um you don't know there you don't know if this is you know he's coming home to her to break up with her or it's you know someone that he loves and maybe ha- maybe it's like a long distance relationship, you know that that's very ambiguous. And then you have the the line kind of in the middle where it's like, you know, I'm not sure if this is real. Hmm. And so that kind of throws another level to it. So maybe this is all in his head. And the the line, you know, you're the last thing on my mind. That can be read two ways as well. It can be <laughs> you're the last thing on my mind as in you're the first of this thing on my line, my mind. Like I'm thinking about anything else except for you. Or mm. if you do take the song literally where this is about someone dying in a car crash, you could think, well, that's, she was the last thing that he was thinking about before she died mm-hmm. or before he died. And I think it means both. I mean, the great thing about this song is that, that Steven really loves to play with those lines, which is why I wanted you on this epi- episode, uh, Bubba Wheat, is because, like, your podcast really focuses a lot on the, like, the double meanings, triple meanings of of the different songs that are out there. And I'm like, well, do, what what song could I give him from B&L that also has a lot of that double meanings. And this is honestly one of my favorite double meaning lines in all of BNL song lore. Yeah, I, I can see that. And, and, and yeah, it's, I've, I, you know, thank you for uh, thinking of this song and, and, and choosing me to, to come on here because I, I did, I did really love it. And, and that line, like the, it starts off, you're right at the beginning of the song, as usual, I'm almost on time. You're the last thing that's on my mind. You're the last thing on my mind. He's driving home to see her. And yes, she literally is the, the furthest thing from his mind. He's thinking of all these other things. Life gets wild. And then at the end, you're left to wonder, is that still oh. true? Or is he, is she literally the last thing on my mind? You, you're the last thing on my mind. On his mind. I dare say my interpretation was, it's kind of both. It's at the beginning of the song. He's driving, he's distracted. He's not really appreciating the things in his life. And that's why he's not being very careful with his own. And then at the very end, he's realizing everything he's going to miss, you know, especially his wife. And she's the last thing he's thinking about. That's how I interpreted it. What struck me was like how, uh, like, 
kind of ob- objective he was about it and almost d- detached. Like he's just kind of noticing things. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Floating above, but also like. Like he's floating above his body. <laughs> he doesn't seem to care. It doesn't seem like he doesn't care about anything anymore because he's leaving. Yeah, he's shuffling off. This mortal off. Coil. The buffalo and uh, doesn't really seem affected <laughs> either way. He's just kind of noticing. Yeah. It's a very good point, Betsy. It's a very good point. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it's like the yeah. passive voice being used, you know. But you get a break in that. There um, is one moment that, we that take he breaks away from that. The bridge? No. There's this wonderful line in the middle. I heard some idiot say that someone's yeah. inside. Yeah, someone I love inside. that. I love that. Made like, me laugh out loud. That made me idiot. legitimately yeah. laugh. This momentary he, anger, and then it's let go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when he performs it live, like the way he pronounces it, like it's very like the diction is very like sharp. Like I heard some idiot ask if someone's inside. Like you might as well put the S bomb in there or something because it's just like this burst of anger and then it's over with. Yeah. I mean, that's what struck me is, I don't know. It's almost like he doesn't care. Like almost, I almost even thought like perhaps it's like semi suicidal. Like he's just kind of letting himself drift off to sleep and get in this car crash. Cause he's, I don't know, you know, I mean, yeah. I think, do you think that this good. is like a, a good relationship or do you think that this is a, a troubled relationship? I, I think I, I kind of go to the, the one line early on as usual, I'm almost on time. Yeah. I want to lean towards troubled. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I, I think, mean, it's a great way of saying you're always late. <laughs> I, th- I think yeah. it's, I don't know if I would go to troubled, but I would say maybe they're disengaging. They're not as interested anymore. They're drifting apart a little. They're not being as thoughtful, not thinking of each Mm -hmm. other as much. And that's why I think this is a really tragic song is because it took that to make him realize, oh, man, you know, like. I really should have uh, paid more attention. I should have been there more, which I think is a pretty uh, universal idea to express. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the um, Stephen edition. To the yeah, that sounds very <laughs> Stephen Page. Can we can we take a moment and just share some appreciation for the greatest lyric in oh, the song? What do you think the greatest lyric is? The slow motion Walter, the fire engine guy. The slow motion Walter, <laughs> the fire engine guy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my god, how did I not notice I that? I heard that and I was like, wait a second. That's like a crazy yeah, I mean that was definitely intentional. <laughs> oh yeah, no, wow. that's exactly what it was. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that that is definitely a deep purple reference. I think I'm gonna have to have my BNL card revoked for that. I I never <laughs> I never click. Well, oh, I mean, graphs, I'm going to have to return. The great thing about that line <sighs> is that it actually does fit in with the rest of the lyrics. At yeah, that yeah. Oh, you know exactly what he means. It, it makes perfect sense. You know, he's like he's seeing things in slow motion and there's the fire engine guy. And man, I don't know you're just assigning him a name yeah. or something or you know who it is or it's got a badge or something. But yeah, I mean, like, it's just hilarious to me that they made a weird pun rhyme on a deep purple song into, into a lyric that fits so well into the rest of the uh the stanza well, it's not even a pun it's a mondegreen oh. like <laughs> i beg your pardon <laughs> <laughs> so we're not talking about Walter Matthau? how long were you sitting on that how, how long are you sitting on that one, Tracy? <laughs> it, it may have almost hatched. That's how long. Very nice. Um, I like that. But I was also thinking, like, what what always kind of occurred to me with that line was the other piece of that is 
was that the song that's on the radio that's playing and mm. that because of his Ooh. distorted view in the moment that's what he hears oh that's really a cool idea mm. i like them could well be Stephen and ed we know you listen please come on the show yes. clear this up Only one way to clear it up <laughs> there's so many lines in this song that are amazing yeah it's very I, I'm a big fan. I think you guys now know that I hear the music first and then I consider the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, but I am a big fan when the lyrics and the music go so well together, you know, or especially if they if, if there's some kind of weird kind of goofy contrast, you mm -hmm. know, or uh, a little bit of an oxymoronic um, kind of disposition between or, or disparance between the uh, the lyrics and the emotional content of the song, seemingly. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get to the music in a few minutes but yes that uh, the the song is sweet the the lyrics are are this it's kind of a sweet but the song sweet. sounds like an apple commercial <laughs> yes <laughs> apple no. we know that you listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, only, <laughs> the only apple commercial song by tim cook please come on the show <laughs> the only apple commercial song i know of is it's uh, hard to believe it's getting better <laughs> it's getting better all the time well, oh it is very beatlesy too <laughs> yeah so that's fair well, I was gonna say this song is very much. Uh, what's that? The horse one, the um, kite. Oh, um, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, which yes, my band very... covered back in the day. The weirdest well, Beatles song to possibly cover, but we did. I think I've heard of it. As, as I mentioned when I started this podcast, I was like, "We absolutely, I, I have to make sure that the week that we discuss mm -hmm. this song." Aaron is on the program because I want to hear his response because to me like I hear this song and I'm like yes the second child could have <laughs> covered this song they could yeah. have written this song wow thank you that's a very big compliment and yes it is 100% up my alley yeah you guessed correctly oh. I mean this is this got me all over it this song <laughs> if you ever don't cover this I will be like disappointed in you <laughs> All right, I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to note that down. The gauntlet has been thrown down. Yeah, I, I guess. Mm. Challenge accepted. I, I really enjoy how Stephen takes the time, Stephen and Ned, um, take the time to describe. Like, this is the most descriptive I've seen them be of a situation, but it fits this song perfectly. They're telling the tale of this man's last moments on yeah. Earth. And the silly, stupid things that he notices. You know what? That's an interesting observation, Tracy, because we've often said on the show that Ed tends to do one of two things. He either just makes a bunch of silly dad pun rhymes or and I'm not I'm, I'm oversimplifying here, but to be clear, <laughs> yes, but... Uh, or he does what, what I call like it's all like a musical haiku. Right. And he like has these lines <laughs> that are just more generally describing a scene or an ambiance or a vibe as the kids say and it sort of just paints a picture in your mind i think this is a really interesting juxtaposition of that style with steven's more in your face mm -hmm. style uh a little more mm -hmm. bombastic a little more got that robin williams energy uh i'm thinking of the song angry <laughs> people right now actually as, as i say this <laughs> like that's what i'm picturing him he's got kind of a jack black energy about him you know sometimes uh mm -hmm. so it's really kind of funny to see those two styles crash against each other here you get that darkness and and weirdness from uh steven and then you've got the more kind of storytelling or scene painting element from ed and i think it comes together really well it's a great example of why i wish that they were still together in the band but i will put that soapbox <laughs> aside for now you're not alone Aaron. <laughs> yeah I, I i do really love the the stanza where the they describe the the accident and you know mm -hmm. how because that that really does paint a picture of especially if someone like basically falling asleep off like you can really see in your head what's happening like basically this this person fell asleep at the wheel and basically drove off a cliff and then you know they by the time they woke up they were already you know the car was flipping and the the coffee is dripping from the ceiling and the the mm -hmm. horizon is doing flips out the window and uh, i really loved the, the line um you know the the worst part was hitting the ground not the feeling so much as the sound oh yeah yeah that's brutal 
the worst part was hitting the ground Not the feeling so much as the sound And, and everyone just had that reaction that I had the first time I heard that line of, oh, like, it's such a mm-hmm. visceral reaction. I know that feeling because I remember getting a tooth pulled at the dentist and I was completely Novocaine, so I couldn't feel a thing, but it sounded like someone was, it sounded like a giant was like snapping a tree off in the woods inside my mouth. And I was like, no, 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 I don't like this. I want this to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very disturbing. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, no, I mean, I I would love to see like Christopher Nolan to do a music video for this where it's got like the inception Ooh. weird gravity effects going I, on. I mean, the, honestly, like the, the first thing that, that came to my mind whenever I was listening to this song, and, and it might just be because like I'm I'm deep in preparation because I'm we're getting ready to do another oh, broadcast are- on uh, Fight Club. And it, it made me think of that. Oh, the, fantastic. The, the car crash. Oh, yeah, and- the near life experience. <laughs> yes. Well, the like the car crash with them, you know, oh, man. flipping off the road. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, speaking of Christopher Nolan, I, I want to give you a chance to plug your stuff, Bubba Wheat. Uh, I I only had time to do cursory searching because Tracy loves to not let us know who the guest <laughs> is until the last minute. I think it's like so we won't be disappointed if they don't show up. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I, I noticed if I'm not wrong, aren't you doing a podcast about Memento yeah. right now, which is one of yeah. my favorite all time i adore that film yeah right right now i'm i'm in the middle where where can people um, find that my podcast is called it's uh it's time to rewind and uh, i focus on uh that one focuses on time loop movies and tv shows Mm. and i do like deep dives on them and i break them down and one episode is dedicated to one loop of the time loop story and i'm i'm doing memento Oh, that's wow. a memento cool idea. Is not like a standard time loop, but I kind of explain it where, you know, Leonard is kind of living his own time loop because he's repeating the same like 10 minutes or however long and then his memory resets. And so I'm doing memento each. Yeah, season. OK, that's yeah. totally and, fits. And yeah. So I'm doing like 45 episodes, one for each scene. Yeah. Oh what my a gosh. cool idea, man. <laughs> I so you do do you do uh, have you done anime? Not, yeah, well? I, I have one on my like my big list. Um but, but I, I do know of a couple like there's uh a be- beautiful dream. I was thinking Steins Gate uh, and Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's and, true. Sorry, uh, I think there was an, an anime series that's that like did a you know, a, I forget what it was called, but it did like several episodes, like an eight episode arc. And each episode was like almost exactly I, the same, but, it, you know, they were animated and and um, voiced differently. But like each episode only had like very subtle changes. And like I, I heard that the, the fandom was really annoyed by it, but I'm, I'm really curious <laughs> to see it. I. I'm guessing that's the melancholy of Haruhi Zuzumiya based on uh, how you described that. Uh, If you ever do that, please (laughs) reach out to me because I would love to discuss that. Some of these lyrics are some of my favorite B&L lyrics kind of of all time. Um, And and it's because they do such a great job of painting this canvas. Like, as a person who's been through a car accident, not one as horrendous. I would hope not, yes. Um, but the, you know, can't help but wonder if all this is real. Like it, it goes back to the fact that he was just sleeping. So maybe he thinks that it is that he's still sleeping, but also like anyone who's been in a car crash, it's a very surreal situation where everything hmm. feels off. I, I have had that, um, sort of temporal distortion effect where it does seem like time slows down, even though. It supposedly is not rooted in anything uh, physical, but uh, I don't know if it's adrenaline <laughs> or what. But uh, yeah, I have I've had that experience where it seemed like I know that couldn't have taken more than half a second, but it felt like probably five, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, rubberneck tra- traffic <laughs> and passes by. Like, who hasn't yeah. had that experience of like either on either I side, thought- like people staring mm-hmm. in the traffic, and then you almost have a second accident <laughs> from people looking. Yeah, I, I also really to like to look. It's almost like instinctual to look. The wow. I, the repeated never seen so much, never seen so much, 
because uh, like you can also like, You're like are you okay are you okay <laughs> yeah i think yeah. there's some evolutionary psychology you can work read there. a double yeah. meaning into that you can also think that that's you know <laughs> uh that's like him uh <laughs> like his life flashing before his eyes you know I've, I've never seen so much in my life like you know and it's just all you know his life is passing before his eyes and then at the very end he ends with blood i guess it's over now because i've never seen so much never seen so much never seen so much never seen so much i guess it's over now because i've never seen so much never seen so much never seen so much Yeah. Yep. When I was going with the like that he's staggering and stuttering, like if you've just had a traumatic brain injury, like he <laughs> he, he could be starting to lose connection with his body in that moment. And like he's I've never seen so much <laughs> I've never seen so much I've never seen like he can't get the thought out. And then he finally gets the thought out, and that's a pretty horrific thought. <laughs> oh crap. I am definitely die i'm gonna have to watch an episode of mr rogers or something after this maybe uh <laughs> maybe uh i don't know maybe some uh bob ross i suggest elf but that's just my own <laughs> Alf personal works. recommendation yeah ah, ah! kill me wow cool <laughs> in this situation maybe <laughs> And then that that almost this last line of I can see my face slump with a yeah. grin. Like he's now exiting his body, but the fact that right. he's upside down that, and his yeah. muscles are now all relaxing. But it also it finishes <laughs> with that and you. So he sees himself and you. So he's seeing and, and thinking of her in that last moment could also be causing him to grin because he's yeah. he's thinking of her now. It's is he thinking of like yes i'm finally rid of her or is he thinking like of of his love for her who knows but i interpret it as his love for her but i think the song is dark <laughs> enough as it is <laughs> <laughs> and then we have that final note i will say i think this is possibly the final best final note of a song like next to the beatles with a day in the life Oh, oh, the final note? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I thought you were... <laughs> I didn't... Sorry, I didn't realize The final you note, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was, like, I, yeah, I was waiting for you to, like... I thought you meant, like, I'm ending not gonna on a... No, 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 I just, like, <laughs> ending on a note. I didn't know you meant a literal note. Yeah. No, the literal note. The, oh, very oh! good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> And uh, I'm I'm gonna put a, a link up this week for people to go watch <laughs> of um, Stephen Page doing a TED a TED talk um, where he talks about a number of different subjects. One of which is that final mm. note, um, but it, but it also talks a little bit about like the end of like when he's singing Silent mm -hmm. Night in concert and he always breaks his voice on purpose in order to get the crowd reaction. You're expecting this beautiful note and he <laughs> cracks it on purpose to to do something subversive. And I think this is another one of those moments, but it's beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, that last note is so <laughs> glorious as a send off of this song of like, he's dying and yet it's a, a splendiferous moment, but at the same time, a, a tense moment. Yeah. It, it almost feels celebratory rather than mournful. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that was the kind of optimism I was referring to earlier. It's like, well, it's unfortunate that we can't talk about certain movies in the same way because of everything we know about Kevin Spacey now. But the very ending of American Beauty, I always thought was really beautiful when he was like looking at the pictures of his wife and remembering his life with her. That was the same mm -hmm. kind of vibe I got from this. And I think that's what he's going for. Um, and I, yeah. so I'm going to slip for a second off of this song. Because for me, this song and Hidden Sun are one and the same. Um, mostly because for like 10 years of my life, I did not realize that Hidden Sun was a, was a hidden track. 
Um, I thought it was a second piece of this song, and it was actually um, them expressing what happens after he dies. Like that there's this this ethereal moment and it has a very ethereal feel so it, it really worked and so a long for a long time that's what i felt like this song that part of the song was and i know like if you do search for like <laughs> if you just do a search for the lyrics then it does include the two songs <laughs> in in the lyric list so if if you don't if you are not familiar with the the two songs just reading the the lyrics you you can get thrown off and think that it's the same song and i think it's very apropos that that kevin's song about struggling with death and cancer comes immediately after this song of the struggle of the last moments of life as well Yeah, Honestly, I think this is possibly yeah, that makes a lot of sense. the best end of a album ever. And I'm not a person that likes a slow song at the end Ooh. of an album, but to me, like this is ah, I don't know, man. Motion picture soundtrack. <laughs> uh there, there's a lot, there's a lot of beautiful yeah. endings albums. I agree, this is up there. Um, I, I'm a big fan of what the Beatles did with some of their stuff with their uh, vinyl records, mm-hmm. where the, they had that groove that catches yes, the needle that... as like a loop, and they would actually put music in there. So we play it on infinite loop when the record <laughs> ended. Like that's the kind of stuff that I love. But yeah, I think this is up there. I, I can agree with that as well. So maybe top 10. How about top 10? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic way to end an album. Yeah. I totally agree. But. It, it, that like you said triumphant uh <laughs> whale you know uh it, it fits in thematically it fits in with the uh the aesthetic of the song which is kind of circusy it's almost very operatic you know yeah, so, yeah i did i, I, I did you it, it's funny that you mentioned the circus vibe because i did mm. get a little bit of the big top circus vibe like it, it's subtle yeah. but i, yeah. I do no, feel it's, it's there, in there definitely yeah absolutely yeah absolutely <laughs> I know that we kind of immediately jumped over to lyrics. Uh, do you want to break it down? Um, I do. I do want to not... mention one more thing about the lyrics. <laughs> wow. I, I, okay, yeah, please. Well, I'm not trying to. Again, this is one here. of my favorite songs. Um, <laughs> but I, could, I couldn't tell. <laughs> um, Steven did say um, <laughs> that this song is about not paying attention to what is most Mm -hmm. important in life. Um, It's not about laughing in the face of death. It's not about a fear of death. It's about not about the responsibility of death. It's about the surreal couple of seconds that you realize that you're dying. And in that time, realizing what was most important to you all the time that you maybe weren't paying attention to, to begin with. And to, uh, Extrapolate a little further, not to get depressing, but uh, in an existential sense, we are all, in fact, dying. So it, it's I think it extends much broader to your life in general. You know, if you're not paying attention to things you should be, whether it's the road or your wife or whatever, um, then, yeah, I think that uh, what no matter what the time scale is on, the message still mm-hmm. fits. Yeah, but one thing that, it's, that I did also want to kind of bring up because I, I did have an alternate read, which I, I think is a bit of, bit of a stretch, because uh, I, I do think that it's mostly literal. Uh, but I, I kind of like this this alternate read on this, where I think that the, the car accident could be more meta- metaphorical. Um, it could be like a breakup. And, and this is like uh, a metaphor for like a, a bad or toxic relationship. And, you know, he's driving uh, to uh, his long distance girlfriend in order to break up with her. And then the car Mm. accident is this bad breakup. And then his grin at the end is like, you know, I the the relationship is dead, but I'm happy that it's over. Yeah, I mean, people do use the phrase train wreck I hear more often, but I think car wreck or car accident mm-hmm. also to describe just a bad situation in general. Mm-hmm. So that's very, very possible. 
Yeah, that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting perspective because like what bare naked ladies do best is it's kind of like leave it open to interpretation and multiple, you know, opinions. So I really love that about this. Related to interpretation, if you get too bummed out from the song, all you can do is when he hits that last <laughs> note, it reminds me of Adam Sandler's Opera Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you can wow. just play that in your head instead. You're like, I'll throw my bye, bye. <laughs> well, and you know, after that, the perfect song to listen to would be Piece of Shit Car. <laughs> 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 because at this point, yeah, that car is of probably a piece car. of shit car. <laughs> um, I'm <laughs> guessing it was totaled, yes. <laughs> Gonna go out on a limb. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned the three four <laughs> music earlier, the the circusy music, Aaron, and I, yes. I want to talk more about that. A very ap- apropos because car accidents are mm. very much like a circus. Like everyone's gonna stop and look at it. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna go through the list of what was what what the music actually was, what the instruments were on this, and then I'm gonna hand it over to you to Bef- break. Before this down you do a that, more. can I make? Can I venture a okay, guess? Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, sure. So I heard a number of brass and woodwind instruments. Uh, I had the feeling that at least some of them were synthesized, if not all of them. Yes. But in part, in okay, I didn't not think so. I thought there was a good mix of both. But in particular, some of those synthesized orchestral sounds sounded like they came from a mellotron. Um, it could be. So Kevin says mm. it, on the notes, it says Kevin was yeah. playing the synth and a sampler. Okay. So yeah, most likely if either a Mellotron or like a digital facsimile of a Mellotron. Um, mm. I think we've mentioned them before because yeah. they have used, they have used one at least once before on, on one of the songs we've covered. <laughs> um, a Mellotron is essentially an analog synthesizer from, I want to say the sixties, late sixties, early seventies. Um, that used actual magnetic tape instead of you know like digital synths like we have today. So it's an analog synth in, in the sense that there's an actual medium or there's an actual the tape. So much like a piano would would strike a string with a hammer, the keys in the Mellotron have these tape loops going constantly, and they press them against the tape head to play them at different speeds, which changes the pitch. I know this is incredibly nerdy, but I I love this stuff. <laughs> no, this is totally something that Kevin, Kevin would be come on all over. Matter of fact, we know that he used yeah. it again later, probably because he didn't uh, have access maybe he, to it. That was like he, he did the the closest thing he could get, and then later when he got that that one week money, he uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Maroon was after stunt though, right? So <laughs> it, it was well, when, yeah. When the uh, investments started paying off, uh, then he, he said, oh, "Okay, I've got enough. I've got Mellotron oh, money yeah. now. I'll go and buy an actual one." I'm sure they <laughs> cost a ridiculous amount of money, but uh, yeah, the Beatles famously loved them, used them on Magical <laughs> Mystery Tour. Best example I can think of is the intro to Strawberry Fields Forever. That flute you hear that has that weird phasey mm. sound. That's from a Mellotron. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, please go ahead. Um, <laughs> Needs so- to nerd out about Mellotron. So we have Jim, like th- they really went out of their way with this song. Um, and the reason is Don was, was, pro- was producing this um, and, and very obvious. Um, and in a little bit, I'm going to play for you guys the demo. And you can see that Don was like, no, we're going somewhere else with this. Um, <laughs> but so we have Jim on the viola the arco double bass and the electric double bass very nice you get that rich sound yeah and yeah we have steve on the flute which i figured you would appreciate uh there aaron nice um we have kevin as i mentioned before in the synth <laughs> sampler we have tyler on the timpani and the snare drum and the cymbal but we have rob tiny maggio men Managioni on the bass drum. So Tiny is the one that he is Tyler's drum okay. kit manager on the tours. He's the guy that will come out dressed as multiple different things and he will play, 
usually there's a couple of different instruments on the side that he will play. Um, and, and he's the one that comes out and does that when they kneel. kneel so it sounds like they actually did. This is funny because I, it reminded me of being in like concert band in like junior high where all I ever wanted to do was play like a drum set, you know, in the jazz band, but you couldn't be in the jazz band unless you were also in the concert band. That's how they get you. So I had to play timpani. I had to play the snare drum by itself and the bass drum by itself. That's what it sounded yep. like. Cause it sounded more like a concert band playing, but I wasn't sure because sometimes you can replicate that sound, but it sounds like they actually did play the, the different instruments individually, much like you would uh, in a, in an orchestral ensemble. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then we have Ed on the electric guitar, which I didn't hear much of. And the, the banjo, I heard more of the banjo. Definitely. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But uh, why don't you why don't you break it <laughs> All down? Right, for let's us break a it bit down. More. I feel like we've already broken it down pretty well. But uh, really quickly, <laughs> uh, tonight is the night I fell asleep at the wheel. That is the full title. <laughs> yes, I'm not missing anything. And, and then floated no, that's, away that's serenely. It. No. Um, so it was recorded <laughs> at 139 beats per minute in the key of A major. <laughs> Uh, it's it's almost a folksy style song. It doesn't really have a traditional verse chorus. It does have like kind of a change. So I'm just going to say A changes and B changes. But if I say verse and chorus, just know it's not strictly verse and chorus. It's a little different uh, stylistically. But our, what we'll call the verse or A section, the changes are A major to E major to D major back to E major. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's a one five four five chord progression. Very simple. Chorus or B section, I must more properly, um, goes B minor to F sharp major, not diatonic to A major. Uh, and then we feel uh, this, but we still kind of feel, sorry, the like the, the tonal gravity uh, stays towards A. So I'm guessing it's a borrowed chord. And then we hop back to A, E, D, E and hang around in E for an extended turnaround back to the A section. There is a bridge, I'm going to call it, which goes A major to E major to D major back to E major. Hey, it's our A changes again until we get this diatonic ascension, A to B minor to C minor back to B minor, and then A, E, D, E again, and then F sharp minor to G sharp minor to A to E with this great crescendo, uh, never seen so much blood, and then leading back into A for the final verse. So our structure is A, A, B, A, B, A, B, C. That's your bridge. A, B, A is the outro. Uh, I, As I've already said here, I really do like the instrumentation, uh, instrumentation quite a lot on this with the banjo and the kind of circusy brass and woodwinds. Uh, it's an odd, odd time signature. Um, and I mean odd, of course, numerically. I'm not judging three, four time. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's <laughs> odd. It's just not even. Um, actually, it quite reminds me of some of Danny Elfman's work, uh, especially with Oingo <laughs> Boingo. Like I could hear this being on an early Boingo album when they had that kind of like mm -hmm. goth ska feel. Uh, some of the sounds, <laughs> as I as I know, it sound like they're coming from a Mellotron. That also gives it kind of like a mid to late career Beatles feel. But these are all bands that I really love. So no surprise. I really dig this song. <laughs> And, and one of the things that we didn't mention was <laughs> that bridge where all, well, I mean, we've mentioned it a little bit, but that, that big yeah, orchestral that crescendo is really build, great. And then boom, it, it, it definitely flattens out. You might say and it flat lines. Back to the line. <laughs> I think that would be very appropriate <laughs> because literally the, the, the ours, like, next couple lines are he's looking at it from above like he has now left his body like he has died um, but I like that next line is all of this confusion there's mm -hmm. something serene and the music mm -hmm. has just become very serene <laughs> What? here's the question what are we going to going, rate eh? this in terms of how many rubberneckers well I I do have a oh, few okay. more things I want to throw out okay, there before please. we get to that. I well, do. I have again. <laughs> I love a ton Let me of, I, I love this song. Let me and so does BNL. Oh, how um, many times? So yeah. BNL has sang this song 106 times. The whole the first time they ever sang it was at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas in 2001. BNL has sung it 68 times since Steven has left. And 
many of them were on that first tour after Steven left and on this most recent tour. Steven himself has sung the song 86 <laughs> times solo. This is, yeah, mm-hmm. got, this is definitely one that they got joint custody of in the, <laughs> in the divorce. I was gonna say Steven sung it a lot in my home. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is one of, one of the favorite children I, for sure. I do think it's funny that BNL sung it sixty eight times and Steven has sung it eighty six times. <laughs> um, I love those little in mm-hmm. idiosyncrasies. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, most recently it was sung a week ago mm-hmm. by Steven. Oh, <laughs> ow! I, that physically <laughs> hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, matter of fact, low, I think low, it would be easy fruit. to say low, this low, is low. a staple of Steven's tour shows, but also of his live from home shows, as he has done it 22 out of the 103 live from home shows. Yeah, just just 20% of his shows, like he's done this. <laughs> yeah. And yes, this is usually a just finisher. 22 of them? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to continue singing after that last note. Yeah. Yes. And everybody gets <laughs> that, that little blood drip. Huh? This one and break your heart. You're not doing songs after those. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Can I... And Aaron, Closes you may not deal. remember, yeah. this was the finisher when we went to go see him oh, live. Oh, you're absolutely group. right. Wow. I did forget that. Because I was watching your face the whole time. <laughs> oh, was that recently? Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I like this song so much. So I'm thinking that a... Oh, there is one more thing I want to say about this song that I love. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How did I almost forget this? I can't forget this. So remember how Brian Wilson came to... When b was recording this album... And they he came to the Alp to the studio. Oh yeah. Um and sang Brian Wilson to them. <laughs> They're like, Well, actually, do you mind if we we share mm-hmm. something with you that we've been working on? This was that song that they shared with him. Oh wow. <laughs> His response, hmm, different. <laughs> <laughs> I like different. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Coming from Brian Wilson, that might be a call. Yeah, I think he likes yeah. different too. So that's probably. Yeah. And I don't, yeah, I don't think you all get it on the first pass either. You, it's a song you have to kind of listen to a few times to really like get the so, nuances of it, you know? So I'm going to, I'm going to play for you guys the, and I don't know if they played for him the record version or what they were working on. I'm gonna do a mm-hmm. screen share and I'm gonna play for you something you guys may have listened to. I know Aaron didn't cause I couldn't share it with him um, cause I had the album cover on on the page. Um, but the demo version of this song, like where it started from. Mm. Um, I, I personally think, thank God for Don was um, for, for changing this. Driving home to be with you Highways divided, cities in view As usual I'm almost on time You're the last thing that's on my mind I wish I could tell you the way that I feel But tonight is the night I found at the wheel Over now Cause I've never seen so much Never seen so much Never seen so much Never seen so much I guess It's over now Cause I've never seen so much Never seen so much Never seen so much Love You're the last I'm guessing he doesn't do the final 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's so much blander. So, yeah, I was just gonna say I, I was bad, I was okay like... with it until the end of the bridge. Never seen so much blood. It's just the energy wasn't there, you know, like well, and they changed yeah. the chord, didn't uh, they? More, I, I don't know. I had to listen to it again. To I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, the chord changes, but um, either way, it just yeah, I agree with with uh, Betsy. It, it's a little blander. Um, still a very good song. I'm sure I would have liked it a lot, but I, I definitely am glad they changed up the instrumentation and made it a little <laughs> more playful and circusy and 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 bombastic. Yeah. Now I got you in my head, Aaron, because. Uh, uh, Let me out. Help, ago, I'm strapped in like, Bessie's head. <laughs> I'm stuck in my brain. Um, you said that one of the songs reminded you of like uh, a song that could be played in the back of a coffee commercial. That's right. <laughs> I get that sound from this original Ooh, version. Obviously, not the lyrics, yeah, but like a little bit, little you, bit. Yeah, it's very like kind of phoning it in. Like mm, when I could have used some there. coffee with Look, this morning, say, and I wouldn't have fallen asleep at the wheel. <laughs> if your tempo is below a certain threshold, and you're using a jangly enough guitar, it will always conjure up mm. a little bit of a Folgers commercial to me. Not a sponsor, but Folgers, please reach out. We want that Folgers money. Folgers, use this demo uh, along with along with scenes of a car tumbling. Um, hold on, guys. Can we air? take a break for a second? I need to go recharge. I need more Folgers. I just can't live without it. <laughs> yeah, the great taste. <laughs> and then reverse it all the way back to the morning and say, you really need some Folgers. Mm. Ooh, wow. Folgers, I am copywriting that. I am trademarking sure that. I am saying you need to legally wrong about <laughs> saying drink Folgers or you'll crash your car. That seems that seems fine. Mm. Should have yeah. had a Folgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Can you get a little Folgers? If in I here? were Folgers, I'm not saying they should <laughs> definitely do this, but if it were me, I would hire someone through like a shell corporation to make a viral video. And then disavow it and say, hey, we didn't know. We never asked for that. But then just make that sweet, sweet meme money. <laughs> With my hands, wash my hands. I may have done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been nice working with you, Tracy. And use that uh, <laughs> use that brother and sister from that creepy commercial. Oh Wait, yes, what? I remember what? that. Oh, they had the, it was a Folgers yeah. commercial. Something going on there, it, or um, Maxwell. Were they a little too excited like about their coffee? <laughs> No, they were yeah. a little too excited about each other. <laughs> was it? They're very, I think I remember them being very huggy and Jamie very close. Jamie and Cersei very, Lannister. Like, their pajamas, you know? You know, so like, mm. I'm Jamie Lannister, and before I before I start my day, I like to reach for a cup of Folgers. <laughs> have, have you guys seen those? And then I reach those, for something else. Have you guys seen those commercials where they took that to the next level and really like made it outlandish that they were falling in love with each other and the parents walk in? What? No. Oh my gosh! Oh, um, that's real that's or like someone made a viral TV video either. mocking that? It, it is okay. a viral video I mocking for half because you said yeah. commercial. Yeah, because it, it kind of came back into uh, vogue like just a few years ago. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> if I happen to find it again, I will send it to you guys because it, it it made me literally laugh out loud. The official coffee of the Targaryen <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Aaron, you yes. were asking, oh, yes. what what do I want to rate this? You said something when you were giving us a breakdown that that really hit me. Ex no, uh, actually, every pun intended. Yeah, please bring um, it on. And and I am gonna play on the pun that uh, that you probably didn't intend of tonal gravity. How many tonal gravities? <laughs> <laughs> because there's definitely gravity I agree. in this song in many yeah. ways. Um, so I think how many, many tonal, tonal gravities, gravities would be a good way. Wow, we are living this. truly in the eleventh dimension here on Bare Naked ABC. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Bubble, we, you probably don't know, but we rate every song from a zero to five. Zero is absolutely wish the song had never been created. It, it was make it delete somehow. Um, five is your island playlist, like you. Well, I, five is your like yeah, absolutely the can't disappear top five of the world, um, and and four above would be your island playlist kind of thing. Um, I'm going to have these guys go first. One, to put the pressure on them, but to give you some time to think as well. Um, I'm going to start. We, we'll go alphabetically backwards. We'll oh, start good. With I'm always first. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Are we, what's our what's our how many uh, total rating? gravities? Again? Nah, are you serious? <laughs> We're not gonna do slow motion Walters. I like slow motion Walters. Okay. Yes. Okay. You you overruled. <laughs> Phoenix right. Objection. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, <laughs> so my score. Hmm. I, I'll tell you that that was kind of just. I, I really wanted you to take over for Jeff when it came to give, doing the rating systems. Me? <laughs> we can do that. This or is Aaron. my way of pushing you into it. All right. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I second persuaded. that nomination. Yeah, I second that emotion. <laughs> you feel like giving me. Okay, so I like this song a lot. I like the multiple angles you could interpret it, like I said before. I like... The wordplay, I love the kind of, yeah, amusement park sound. I love three, four timing. Um, there's a lot of love, a lot of love, a lot of love. A lot of there's love a in lot the air. I love about this song. <laughs> Who love a love? When you reach for Folgers. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's some hot coffee. Um, yeah, I I never skip the song. I I just really, um, I think I will give it a four point seven five. Damn it, Walters. What? <laughs> my spillers? Four and so, three quarters. Bubba wheat. Uh, we have a thing on this show called drinking the haterade. Whoever uh, rates the song lowest is drinking the haterade that week and i don't mind drinking the haterade on songs <laughs> that i don't like but i really don't like being the lowest score on a song that i actually <laughs> like a lot well, like, that was your well it's your turn so go ahead <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, it's definitely on my playlist it's on my best of because it's, it's fantastic i'll definitely be you know I listen to these songs many, 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 many times and prep for a show. So if I don't like it, I get tired of it really quickly. I, I'm definitely going to be coming back to the song again very soon. Um, I don't know if I can go 4.75, Betsy. It's really good. I, I think um, I give... Up to you, man. <laughs> I think I give Tonight is the Night I Fell Asleep at the Wheel... 4.5 slow motion Walters. Oh, nice, nice. That's um, very good. It is. I do like this I, song. I will hand it. I'll hand it over to you, Bubble Week, because I usually go last. Uh, what? How many? How many slow motion Walters will you give this song? Well, I I don't have a ton of experience, uh, like I said, because I, I only listened to it maybe a you know a half dozen times uh, in preparation for this this show, and I you know I I did really enjoy it. it it's definitely like in, in terms of like realistic ratings, I am definitely giving this a a heart on Spotify uh, mm -hmm. to add it to my liked songs. I don't know if I have a specific playlist, and and I I have a a playlist where it's kind of my favorite songs, but it's the the way the playlist um I, it's called Turn It Up, and it's it's basically if this is a song that came on the radio, mm, would I turn the volume up? I like that. And if the answer is yes, then it goes like that on that playlist. And this this wouldn't Ooh. make it onto that playlist, yeah. but it's close. Uh, so I, and, and I think mostly because it's, it's just so fresh to me. So I haven't really had a time for it to, to seep into my subconscious. I'm giving this a, a four slow motion Walters. I mean, that's still pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's a very, very good score. And thank you for saving me from drinking the haterade on this episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a champ taking the bullet. Yeah. <sighs> and that is that. <laughs> nice. Stefan, I knew you couldn't make it with us last week. So what did you That is think? correct. <laughs> well, Due to the scheduling problems of everyone else, you weren't able yeah, to make it. Was, it. <laughs> and it that's chaos. Chaos. It was. Um, well, speaking of chaos, what were your thoughts on this song? <laughs> well, uh, I have fallen asleep at the wheel before. Um, I was working two full-time jobs, and my day off consisted of just an eight-hour work week. 
Um, so I'd have to drive close to an hour to go from one job to the next. And, um, um, it was tough, you know, I was trying to, trying to stay awake. And this one, um, evening as I was going from one job to the next, I, I did fall asleep at the wheel and, um, uh, ended up colliding with another car. And fortunately they were okay. And I was okay. Um, I just went off the road and, mm -hmm. um, I called up work and I said, you know, it might be a little bit late. I, I went off the highway and uh, they're like, okay, sure. Sounds good. Get here when you get here. And uh, still, I was only an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> so I still went to work. Everything was okay. <laughs> so uh, no real damage done to my car and um, was able to get out. No problem. So not the case uh, of the, the narrator of this song. Uh, yeah unlike the uh <laughs> this this person um um it's kind of otherworldly like um it's almost like a lullaby but also kind of like um like somebody ascending like out of body experience kind of thing mm -hmm. um and almost kind of circusy in a way uh yeah it's it's got a, definitely a different type of music than bnl is known for um, very slow pace. I can, I can feel myself being lulled into, um, a type of trance or, or something of that nature, just mm. from listening to the song. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't recommend listening to the song as you're driving, uh, <laughs> or so you may fall be... asleep at the wheel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, and, uh, they're like, uh, the lyrics were pretty good about the guy's last fleeting thoughts um, as he passes on, you know, from the from this car wreck and um, what's going on in the real world as they're taking the jaws of life and trying to take him out. And and then, as you know, his point of view, as he's ascending from the scene, he's able to see everything, which. Based on, uh, you know, accounts of near death experiences is it's not far off. So some people see themselves come out of body and um, as they're being revived, they zoom back in. Um, it wasn't the case with this particular individual. He kept on going. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's the case. You know, that's the way it is. Uh, this was not a near death. This was a clear death <laughs> <laughs> uh, scenario. I thought it was pretty good. Um, would I have it on my playlist? I'm not sure, but it's, uh, it's, it's not, would I say fun? It's not fun. It's different. <laughs> it's different. And it sounds kind of cool. I think they did a good job with it. Um, so I would probably, if I was going to rank this, I don't know what the ranking system is here. Um, this week's ranking system ended up being how many slow motion Walters. All right, that's weird. Okay, I would think like Jaws of Life or something, but well, we we love the the line slow motion Walter the fire engine guy, which is a a uh, Mondegreen of the line from Smoke on the Water, Fire in the Sky. It's what people uh, mistook that line to be, and B and L worked it into their song. Oh, okay, I see. So that's uh, that's musical jargon. Yeah, so cool. All right, cool. Um, that's weird. Slow motion Walters, huh? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I would say that, I mean, is it like something that they would probably play in concert? I would say not, um, unless they're <laughs> unless they're trying to change things up a little bit. And, um, you know, everybody's like, everybody, it's time for a potty break. Or, you know, if you're going to go and get a beverage, now's the time. Uh, don't forget to stop in at our, you know, merchandise stand and pick up our latest album or you know a sweatshirt or something you know and they play the song so that nobody's missing anything um what would i rank it it's, well i would say i mean it's well done so i'll rank it like i guess like a 3.25 i think it's above average it's not astonishing but it's well done and but it's completely different than what BNL would normally do. Um, I can hear Steve singing, so um, I like Steve. 
I think he's the lead singer for BNL. And and that's that. So, <laughs> end of story. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Pretty interesting song. Thank you for letting me uh discuss the song with you. You're welcome. Uh, Cuz it's wacky. It it's is. Different. That's why I was like it, he deserves to hear this. It's yeah. it's out there and it it's one of those ones that it grows on you. The more you listen to it, the more it's like yeah. It, you you hear more and more things and you're like, oh yeah, oh my gosh. And kind of like the Beatles. Um, I do want to go backwards a little bit real quick. Um, we missed out on a history last mm. week. Um, so I'm gonna bring it up now on May 19th, 1999. BNL showed up on Two Guys and a Girl in a Pizza Place uh, yeah. for the episode <laughs> called Two Guys, a Girl and Be- Bare Naked Ladies. <clears throat> One of my most favorite episodes of that series ever. Um, And the other reason that's important is because when we get around to the outside of BNL songs, the adjacent songs, we'll have Steven singing the wonderful song to, to Ryan Reynolds of, you know, Canada still loves you. No, um, no, 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 oh, no, no. Canada what is it? loves you back. <laughs> Canada loves you back. Thank you. Um, and this is where he met Ryan Reynolds, um, was on the taping of this show, as well as when they toured with a lot of more set for that year. And mm. he was dating on a lot of more set during that time. Uh, natural, right? Yes, natural, exactly. So. Um, for my rating, this song is nearly perfect it may be perfect i'm going to come back to it at the end of the year and decide um it's slow but it's sarcastic while being earnest (laughs) um it it finishes on the mm, inarguably the strongest note um if you add that hidden track in which beautifully blends with the song that's definitely (laughs) five for me um it's no wonder this album is possibly my favorite album of all time not even more than any beatles album like this album is way up there um so i'm gonna give this a 4.85 for right now very nice very nice <laughs> Ethan, very nice very nice i like <laughs> yeah, this is very good um <laughs> so what I want to do right now is I want to give Bubba Week yeah. some time to plug, plug everything and anything All the plugs. <laughs> that he wants to plug. More, more. Tell us more about what you're more really plugs than the Hall of Presidents. Plug it up. <laughs> plug everything possible. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I've I've been around on the internet for for a long time, so I I do have a lot of projects that I'm I'm kind of juggling, but it's my. You know, the, the one that's most relevant is my music podcast. It's called Lyrical Innuendo. And um, and Tracy was on on an earlier episode. Two of them. And on, on that. Oh, yeah, two of them back to back. Uh, and uh, every other Friday, we uh, pick a, a song, mostly random. I mean, uh, we there's definitely a, a process to it. And we dig into the lyrics and we discuss any hidden meanings in the lyrics. And usually we aim for, you know, the sexual innuendos and occasionally we delve into, you know, uh, drug innuendos. And uh, sometimes we go into other directions. The, the most recent episode as of this recording, we talked about um, Fat Boy Slim's weapon of choice. Mm. And uh, that's, you know, Fantastic we came to the video. conclusion that that's actually about Dune. Wow. Because it, it without line, rhythm, you, you know, want to track the worm. That's right. Nice. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm gonna have to listen to that. And that that was a lot of fun. And um, and then you know we talked a little bit earlier about my other uh, main podcast, which is movie related. It's called It's Time to Rewind. Um, and that one, mm-hmm. you know, I started out uh, doing Groundhog Day. Um, I've done some episodes of the twilight zone i did a couple episodes of buffy and angel that's that had the time loops in them Um, i've done kind of some lesser known movies like triangle and time crimes and i had the director of time crimes on an episode to talk about it uh nacho vigalando he also directed colossal Um, oh i love that i think that's yeah that was great Um, and then I'm currently doing Memento, and uh, later on in 
in August, um, I I was actually able to talk to Stephen Tobolowski, who played uh, oh, nice. Sammy Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll, his episode will be going up in August. Um, and then I'm also, uh, it, it's mostly kind of um, on hiatus because I'm busy podcasting, but uh, for about uh, a little over 10 years, I've been doing a written movie blog called Flight Stites and Movie Nights. Uh, and that's, and I've uh, covered superhero and comic book movies and pretty much, you know, everyone you've ever heard of. I've watched it, reviewed it. I've I've got over 500 movies that's that I've covered. So a ton of really obscure ones that no one has ever heard of is on there too. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron has like five ideas for podcasts at this point <laughs> that I told him I'm like I'm not doing anything more. I can barely keep up with this. Oh, there's so, so much potential yeah, though. There's a lot of potential. <laughs> But no, that, that's excellent. Uh, super jealous that you got to meet. Uh, I'm, I am I apologize. What's the character actor's name again? He played Sammy Jenkins. Yeah, he's Steven such Tobolowski. a fantastic character actor. I loved him in pretty much everything. Uh, he was in Groundhog Day. Another. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> another another time. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Time connection. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming over and joining us, Bubba. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, um Guys. Next week, we're back to our usual day of recording. So if you show up on Thursday, well, then you're going to be too little too late. <laughs> Someday, Tracy, <laughs> when I have enough money, I'm buying you I'm buying yeah. you a Segway so you can ride in on your Segway, <laughs> stay make rolling. your Segway, and then ride off on your Segway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get him a little horn. And go, me, me. <laughs> Do the Roadrunner. Yeah, just, it's just Mel Blanc's voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys say this and yet you don't think I would actually do it if you did it. No, I think you would. That's exactly why <laughs> no, I would actually do it. That's yeah. not correct. <laughs> oh, I totally would. I would like clear a space over here Her, so I could literally just ride right right up the stairs <laughs> into your house. <laughs> He's gonna ride a segue up uh, to his hover round up to a stair yes, lift. Please oh, do yeah. this. Oh god. <laughs> People, you know, you have money. Send it to us so we can make this happen. Just please oh, yeah. donate to Tracy's Segway Fund. After five years, yeah, we're rolling for in just it. Just the, the cost of one cup of Folgers a day. <laughs> no, it's just gonna be Wait a minute, you can't do it. For the cup of an incestuous cup of coffee. Oh, <laughs> Uh, if anyone knows any good lawyers who deal with corporate branding and uh, yeah, please uh, Folgers, we yeah, know you listen. Really listen, come on the show yep. and please, mm. please sponsor us. It's the weirdest, like it was like a negging pitch to to Folgers <laughs> trying to lower their self esteem. Oh God, well, it's a dark. That's a dark, dark roast. <laughs> oh. Uh, anyway, Bubba Wheat, I guess I should say uh, many things. First, sorry. Uh, second, thank, thank you so much for, <laughs> for, yeah, thanks for putting up with our craziness and thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate hearing your uh, your opinion on these things and on the song. So uh, thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, well, I'm not going to kick us off. It's going to kick us off any second. Yes, the clown? Pennywise. <laughs> yeah, Pennywise is on the way. Go, oh, God! Dude, I live in the hometown of yeah, Stephen King. Not that, even. That. That's possible. Well, have a good night, everybody. Take care. See you next week. Celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.